On Sunday, Ron continued to connect with the idea of seeking first the kingdom of God. And he went through a few different things about the kingdom of God and what it is. I'm kind of curious, what about the kingdom of God stuck out to you? As you were listening to his sermon, uh, what things about the kingdom of God felt more relevant or maybe just stuck out to you because you have more questions about it? Uh, So if you're willing, just share in the comments uh, what stuck out to you about the kingdom of God and maybe why. Um, I'm just kind of curious about where you all are at when we're talking about seeking first God's kingdom. But for me, there were a few things that stuck out to me and I want to unpack a couple of them for us today. The first one, and the one that might need a little bit more explanation, is the kingdom of God is now and not yet. This is kind of a weird concept for us to grasp, but I'm going to try and help the best that I can. You see, we have to go back to this idea of the gospel, or the good news. And the good news is that Jesus is king. From the beginning of Genesis Through the end of Revelation, we see a story that shows time and time and time again that God is king, that he is the ruler, and he is all-powerful. I mean, just look at Genesis 1.1. It says, In the beginning, God created. Stop right there. Out of nothing, God created all that we see. Now that is power. And being the creator gives you the ability to be king because you made everything. It is yours. And this is good news because it gets better. God proves his kingship through defeating death at the resurrection of Jesus. Again, this is powerful because the antithesis of creating is death or destruction. So God created, then God conquered the only thing that could seemingly compete with a creator, death, or a destroyer. And so this is good news because we can be saved because Jesus is king. But yet we still feel pain. We still still deal with sorrow. We still have suffering. And that's a fallout of sin. This is what we mean by the kingdom is now and not yet. It is here. We see evidence of God's kingdom in the created order, in miracles, in the fact that we can have hope, peace, and love. So the kingdom of God is here. But as long as sin and the consequences of sin are also around, there is still more of the kingdom of God that we can experience. So as we wait for the kingdom to come in its fullness, and that will come when Jesus returns again, we display the kingdom of God by living out the fact that Jesus is king over our lives. So that's the first one, that the kingdom is now and not yet. We experience it part now as we experience God's kingship over us and over our lives but we will experience it fully in heaven when sin is completely destroyed. The second one is that the kingdom of God is universal, but at the same time, it's also divisive. And this seems kind of like a paradox. It doesn't really work together, but let me explain. The kingdom of God is universal. It is for everyone. God says that he desires for all to be saved in 1 Timothy 2.4. So it is for everyone. It is universal. That's his desire is for the kingdom of God to be experienced by all of his creation. However, only those rooted in the kingdom, those who have accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, will receive the benefits of the kingdom. And that's how it's divisive. Because it divides the righteous from the unrighteous. Now let's be clear here. None of us on our own are righteous. But it's through Jesus that we hold his righteousness. And so the kingdom divides those who hold Jesus, the righteous, from those who do not, the unrighteous. There is a natural obstacle between both sides, between those who are walking the path God's way and walking the path in his timing, and those who do not care and are not on the path at all. 
their pursuits, their goals, and the means to those goals are in such conflict that they divide and should show a distinction between those in the kingdom and those who are not. So the kingdom of God is universal, but it is divisive because it divides the righteous and the unrighteous. So what do we do? I mean, that's kind of depressing to think about the kingdom being divided. But there's something that we can do. As a church, we are to announce the kingdom to the world by how we live our lives. But then individually, there's things we can do as well. We can seek to grow under the reign of God, allowing him to take fully control of our lives because he's king. We allow his love to permeate our lives in such a way that we are changed and the world can't help but see a difference. Can't help but see the kingdom in us. Now, I know some people, they really like checklists. And so I want to give you a few things that you can do or ask yourself in regards to, am I living out the kingdom? Are you being drawn to reading your Bible? Are you realizing that your need for fellowship with other believers is real? And are you actually taking steps to have that fellowship? You know, sometimes we can know that we need something, but not actually seek after the answer. So do you know that you need fellowship with believers? And are you attempting to have that fellowship? It's a great, great question to ask. Also, is your worship becoming real, active, and alive? And finally, are you allowing God to use you to bring others into his kingdom? Now, these aren't things that you just do once and check off. They are at least things that you should be doing daily, check boxes that you should be going over at least on a daily basis so that you can help experience the kingdom of God now in part, but that it will also prepare you for living in the fullness of the kingdom when Christ returns. So let's seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness so that we can bring the kingdom of God in part now in our lives, showing it to the world so that in one day we will get to experience it in the fullness of who God is and his kingdom in heaven.